This is Chris Richards reporting on behalf of Independent Australia with Adam Richards and Ned Thorne, who have just walked over 300 kilometres from Sydney to Canberra for refugees. Were people supportive along the walk? Yeah, they really were. Mm. Absolutely. Like we, um, we had... Uh, we expected we'd be sleeping on ground sheets and we ex expected that we'd be sleeping in sleeping bags and ground sheets and, and when it was raining in Sydney, that wasn't a really great th thing to contemplate. But my sister in Adelaide went crazy and said, look, she's going to ring ahead and she did and she just rang up motels. People donated accommodation to us the whole way across. It was amazing. Yeah. It really, really was. We, we couldn't believe it. Right. If nothing has changed in regards to the situation of the people on oh, Madison yeah. Nauru in 12 months' time, would you do it again? I'll be going again. I can't speak for Ned, but if nothing's changed, by God, I'll go again because there's too much riding on it. What type of change would you want to see between now and then that would convince you that you don't need to walk again? Shut down the camps, bring them here, Bingo. process them humanely. So all 2,000 people brought back to the mainland? Every person. Absolutely. Anything Every short of that's not going to be acceptable no. for you? It's just, you know, so unworthy of us as a country. Full stop. You know, we're Aussies. We, this is crap. What do you think of the policy lockstep of Liberal and Labor on this issue? You're going to have to answer that. I have no idea what it is. The policy lockstep is that the two of them are Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Oh, stupidly ridiculous. Here's the thing. You know, there was once a Liberal Party that was led by, you know, Malcolm Fraser who, you know, as a kid, my family were Labor voters and he was demonised. But the reality is that Fraser's record on migration and Fraser's support for Vietnamese refugees following the Vietnam War, Fraser's a man of, of integrity. They fought alongside us. They became refugees because of it. And by God, he would do something about it. I respect the man for that. The, the modern politicians have got addicted to using people. And, and, and now, God help us, Pauline, she's run out of beating up Chinese. Now she's beating up Muslims. They've become addicted to using people. Let's not people. get started on that. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. The, okay. the lockstep is a great shame for both parties, and, and they're, they're equally in a race for the gutter. Labor started mandatory detention 26 years ago and still continues to this day. Yeah. Uh, do you think Labor is gutless on this issue? Yes. And if so, why? Because they're not doing anything about it, and that's why they're sitting there. Because that's what they think is going to get them votes, and it's not. Ordinary members have got to start lining up and threatening their hand in, and, and if needs be, handing in their cards. Because here's the situation: stay compliant. If I'm going to try and work from the inside, crap. The reality is, people, there's children who've been locked up for five years. How many years do you want to work on the inside for? How many, how many years torture are those kids are you going to stand for? The reality is that both Labor and Liberals stand for abusing children. That's what they stand for. If I made anyone uncomfortable by that, good. It's time people got off their asses and called them to account on it. Because when and if the rank and file of the Labor and Liberal parties got off their asses and said, enough's enough, that'd be fine. See, here's the thing. What they're not saying is that their parties are cashing checks with, you know, writing checks, should I say, that their children are going to have to pay for in, in time to come. And the kids are going to be looking and going, Mum, Dad, you know, what happened? Like, what were you guys thinking? It's like the stolen generation. There was a time that seemed like a good idea. This is not going to look good in the pages of history. And our kids are going to ask, what in hell did you do? What do you think of the Green's policy on this issue? And do you think there's a bit of a case of... Uh grandstanding sometimes by the Greens around this issue or do you believe that they're the only party that is genuinely compassionate about this? With respect, I can't believe we'd even ask a question about a party standing up for what's right on this issue. I forget the Greens on every other issue, but on this issue, they're leading this nation and good on them. You know, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a member of the Greens and I'm not a great Green voter, but they've been getting my vote in recent years. And for good reason. Has it been more difficult this time around to get people to support your walk? Yes. No. Yes and no is probably a fair answer. That's you, you spotted. A fair no, yeah. Here's the thing. Um, uh, it, it, it's been, you know, as I say, like the, the, the support we got from motels really was very surprising and that's how much it's percolated in the middle of Australia 
that people really, really don't like it. But I think amongst the activist movement, there's a real sort of almost compassion fatigue. Like people have been battling this for a long time. And you know, for us, we've, we've done a couple of walks, but there's people have been fighting this for years. I don't know how they do it. So for a lot, for I think many people, it's kind of hard to get motivated. I, I think there's a lot of compassion fatigue. Here's the thing, you know, we just got to keep going. And, you know, and so we will. What do you think about the small numbers that turned up for your rally today? At least they were there. The, here's the first thing there is to say is those people that came, we had people come from Newcastle, Sydney, Adelaide. It was, that was such a privilege to be able to spend time with those people. And we're really grateful about that. And we're really, you know, we're, we're disappointed that we didn't see more people, but we understand it's a long weekend and a lot of people leave Canberra at that time. And, you know, we just really hope that next time we come, if there is a next time, the government doesn't stop it, that hopefully more Canberrans can get behind us. And what we're into at the moment is an inquiry about what we needed to do better that would have got the message out so people would have known we were here and could have gotten behind us more. Started but, you know, pushing it earlier and earlier, I reckon, probably. Probably. But here's the thing, you know, uh, it was great. The people we had were great. And, and ultimately, sometimes it's not about whether someone agrees with you in life. It's about what stand you're willing to take. And the one thing that I think we achieved most on this walk is that we're just normal people and we're just little people. But big things... Big little people. Well, we'll never... Yeah, big, big version, unfortunately. Very big little people. But, um, but the truth of the matter is that it's only when little people stand up and if we could be an example just to a few people to, to get up on this issue as well, then we've achieved our purpose. And, um, you know, if we can do it, anyone can do it. Thank you for talking to Independent Australia. Uh, our, our pleasure, um, Chris, and, um, you know, thank you for talking with us.